Welcome to Ping Pong Schmoogle. It's episode 20 of Get Up Podcast with Josh Doey. What's going on, everyone? It's me just hanging out. Um, yeah, chilling. This is the MTV Cribs. I'm going to be showing you all where to go, what's up, and who's around. Step one, come on through to the main room of my big old mansion. As you can see, we've got my friends hanging out here, chilling like villains. What's up, guys? It's me, Josh Dowie, in episode 20. What the frick is going on? Okay, so I am standing. That's why the audio sounds different. That's why everything's different. It's why I'm standing here, because I'm just kind of just grooving around, moving around, right? Trying to get my bearings, right? Trying to get set on the camera, trying to figure out how I can wiggle freely and talk about things that'll make sense to both visual and audio listeners. Don't know if that's actually going to happen. Also, I'm wearing a Keith Haring bathrobe and it's hot as fuck in here. Oh my God, this basement that I live in is so hot sometimes. Also, I bike really hard to get home and I come home sweaty and I just, I just get inside of my house and I'm like, dude, it's so hot in here. But truthfully, there is poor air circulation in there. Really trying to make sure that, you know, the place that we live in, airtight. Poison canisters outside, it's World War XI, we don't know what the fuck's going on outside. At least the poison gas won't get in. Am I right? Oh, well, I call it the art bunker. That's where I live. Living right here inside of my art bunker with my friends. Where I can make podcasts. Go home, grease up, shave, and put myself inside of a Dutch oven. Does anybody remember like a Dutch oven? Like you get trapped by your older brother under a blanket and he just farts? Oh, dude, you got me trapped in in the Dutch oven. That was, oh. That was a big part of my childhood. Okay, the bathrobe is too sweaty and hot. It's getting hot in here, so take off all your clothes. So now I have to just make sure, I have to just make sure that the microphone doesn't fall. So I'm removing the microphone from my pocket. And as you can see, I have a 16 foot cord that I bought just in case I needed 16 feet of lav mic. Turns out most of the time you only need four feet and you're just left with this like nightmare. Like I thought when I bought AirPods, I was escaping this. Like I thought I never had to do this with cords anymore. I was like, oh, you know, whatever. I've got a few cords, you know, Apple's got a few cords for its, its, uh, its charger, whatever, that's fine, but at least I'll never have to untangle them, remember like those 10 feet iPhone cords, yeah motherfucker, well, have you ever tried owning a 16 foot lav mic cord, you ever tried having a 16 foot lav microphone on your person? Trying to figure out if the volume I'm speaking into is correct. So we are going to fly through space currently. And here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to put your mind and my body in unison. We're going to explore space. All that we need is our minds. Now this sounds like a book being sold, like someone selling the power of your imagination, but let's collaborate. Imagine you and me gliding through space, flying anywhere. We can be anything. Together, we are interdimensional beings using the power of our minds. Now I'm going to lead you guys through a very quick meditation, like just to open up our minds a little bit. Take a Deep breath in, 
and release your 2020 sound. Oh my God. Whew. What was your 2020 sound? My 2020 sound was existential. That's when I knew my cry for help was not on video and instead it was my life. Everyone thinks when somebody's crazy, talkative, energetic, whew, what's going on in their head? Let me tell you, it's something we all share. A human body, a mind, words, eyes, perceptions, and opinions. Everyone has an opinion, but not everybody has, has a valid one. That's something I feel like has been dis Stopping myself from saying something stupid. Whoa, welcome everybody. We are back to our dance class. Whew, it's sweaty. G give yourself a little fan. Give yourself a little fan. We're working up a sweat. My head's probably looking a little bit red. I'm checking myself out in the playback monitor. Peck's looking shaped, body is looking strapped, and we're just, we're, we're just gonna flex for as long as we can, and this is still the meditation, everyone. Flex as hard as you can. <gasps> Be water, my friend. Whoa! Was that racist? I don't want anything to do with that if that was racist. Swiping along to the next channel. Oh, he's doing what with his arms? Attention audio listeners, what I'm doing with my arms is called the wave. You may do it with me. The viewers on the video side have already joined. We're just going to be doing arm waves across our body. Awesome. And hoping one day I can get my friend Matreya to come lead us through a yoga class. That would be pretty tight. All right, so once we've done enough arm waves, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stand up, pecs deranged, and we're gonna do the Bruce Lee pose again. <sighs> Be water, my friend. Don't want anything to do with that joke, do we? Modern day 2020, can you joke about anything? Yeah, you can. You can become the change that you want to see. My name's Mr. Mackey, okay? I'm gonna be talking like Mr. Mackey. Now we are transforming into characters from our childhood. So the generation before me would be like Winnie the Pooh. Um, you, you know, they grew up watching the Jetsons. Um, for me, one of my childhood characters, um, someone who I watched very frequently, was Mr. Mackey. I'll do him now. Okay, what's happening over here, kids? Okay. Shit, stay in the scene. When you finish a scene, they teach you in acting school, don't laugh at yourself because that's you being self-conscious. We're gonna try again, and I'm gonna start the scene um, right from the top, thank you. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of walk into frame like so. So this is me out of frame. I'm gonna walk into frame. And then I'm gonna say my line. Awesome. Any questions? Okay. This is this is my audition. Celebrity impressions, Mr. Mackey. Shit. Maybe I shouldn't say that as I'm walking in. Celebrity impressions, Mr. Mackey. Okay, kids. What what's gonna happen over here? Okay. You, you stop playing around. Okay. Stop that tomfoolery. Okay. And scene. So, um, thank you so much for your time. Um, if you would like to have me as your Mr. Mackey, um, take my head, blow it up into Mr. Mackey's shape, and um, give me a green sweater. That's something that fills my head a lot. South Park. Why am I so weird, I wonder, sometimes? I watched... South Park, every night when I was a teenager. What shaped my mind? 
breaking the rules. Everything is permitted because they are hilarious. They are masters of comedy and they are not censored. So you wonder, Josh, what's it like to be so uncensored? Why are you like that? Why do you say pee pee poo poo so much? I'll tell you. I go all the way back into time. We have smoked so much weed, we are going back into our memories. Grade six. Opening shot, the exterior of the school. Interior shot, me. Wearing an Eric Cartman shirt from South Park that says, Hey, that's a crack. Not a good Eric Cartman impression, but we're just going to move past that. This is me, sixth grade. I'm 12, and South Park is my fucking jam. Whoa, that is wild. Who shares that? Do current generations love that? Oh, does everybody love TikTok? I, you want to know how to sound old? Oh, 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 what's up with all the TikToks? I'll tell you what's up. Not much. What about you? Mind-blowing TikTok content. My brain is just fucking full of knowledge about South Park and World of Warcraft. Why is there so much useless shit in my head? I used to return to playing World of Warcraft once a year just to see like how the game was. But this year I can't because I've been hacked and my account has been taken away from my possession, possibly permanently. On that account, I had a character with a total of like 2,000 hours. And what do you get for playing 2,000 hours of one video game? 2,000 hours of time spent playing video games is what you get. And a little medal that goes into my me being a loser cabinet, right next to the reasons I should be a virgin, right next to the I pay for Tinder gold cabinet. Inside the award show for life because that's my perception of what heaven is you reach the end and you say what did I do with my time? Pew, pew, pew. Did this much parkour had this much fun in acting school really 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 tried hard to be an actor and eventually did Podcast stand-up comedy. Those are my current goals. I Don't really have goals in parkour currently But I am working on a video with Jovi coming out soon <laughs> Get ready is brand new footage from your two favorite boys. It's a new promo. This is me filming my promo for the video. We've already decided on the songs. We filmed about three lines each, which totals the delicious smell of Bora Bora waters wafting into my nose. Bring it on in, Joby. What we have here is the Febreze Air Effects. The flavor Bora Bora Waters. This fantastic product is something that you can have in your own home. And better yet, it's childhood friendly. Close your eyes, spray yourself, and smell the Bora Bora Waters. Because in 2020, we can't air travel anywhere, but we can go somewhere in our minds. Bora Bora Waters. Do not spray into your mouth. Ah! 2D, did it freak you out? Did 3D freak you out when it came out? Some people these days were born 3D. Snaps, please. Snaps, please. Some people were born in an era where 2D animation was not the only thing. Some people are born, and everything is in 3D. <laughs> Cue like the, the like cymbal sounds, or the gong. <gasps> 3D! 
everything changed with 3D. With 3D, we have the internet. With 3D, we're living in three dimensions. Do you guys remember when video games, one of their gimmicks used to be that, dude, look, it's in three dimensions instead of two. That used to just be one of the, like, mechanics, one of the core tenets of the game was like, dude, look at how cool in 3D this is. But what is 3D? When we live in a 3D world and analyze everything and interpret, we think in 4D, we see in 2D, and live in a 3D world. This is something that I think about quite often. How do magnets work? Not actually what I think. Here's what I do think. Do we truly live in a 3D world? Imagine this. Living in a 3D world. Erectile dysfunction is rampant. And every time I sneeze, Another person dies in 2020. Achoo! Dude, you just sneezed on my face! Sorry, I got my death particles on you. Ah! Did I get it off? No, you have COVID. Mind blowing. His creative prowess was mind blowing. He could come up with skits on the spot. He knew exactly where to go and when. He knew to step left. He knew to step right. And when things got scary, he held his butt tight. We're going to hold that butt tight together just for one more leg position. And I hope everybody's still doing my stretching video. This one's called, I think I know how to fight. This is how I show that. And hopefully they don't call me on my bluff. So. Say, for example, somebody wants to fight me. Say they think that, um, that they, they own a diamond store and I had robbed a diamond from them. So this first position is called, hey, give me back my diamond. You're going to put your fist out forward in front of you, um, kind of fisticuffs, kind of like how you see in the internet videos. Um, you're going to raise one slightly higher just for the, that 2D, right? And then we're going to tense our core just ever so slightly so we can lean back and push those hips forward. And um, this is called Y I Ata. You can even start rotating your fists. Y I Ata. Y I Ata. And then we're going to change the Y I Ata upwards, open. And and this is called the Y Iota. Y Iota. And then you can accentuate this pose by also pushing your pelvis forward, extending that arm straight all the, all the way to the fingers. Breathe through your back all the way up through the fingers and go Y Iota. <clears throat> Do you guys think I look like a Greek statue? Sorry, <laughs> sometimes I get a little. Little, little insecure. <laughs> hey, this is me trying to flirt with you. Hey, sorry, I couldn't help but see you back there, living all cool. That's my flirting technique. So um, if you would like, leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, what do you think of my flirting technique? Um, that's my first one. And then here's my second one. I'm a little bit more of a joker this time. And um, contacts is I almost hit her on my bike. Oh, jeez! I'm sorry, I almost hit you back there. Do you like ice cream? Because because we made like a like a weird, awkward, random eye contact. This is a hypothetical situation. I don't think I would actually flirt like this. So if anyone thinks I actually flirt like that, whoa! You don't even know me. Why I oughta. Back to the why I oughta. We're gonna rotate this way. Swap fists. And now my response. To that last thought is that awkward random eye contact is weird. Or is that random awkward eye contact? That's the one. Random awkward eye contact in public. 
Random awkward eye contact in public is the weirdest fucking thing. Like, you're just living your life, minding your own business, and then all of a sudden, another person who's living and minding their own business intercepts reality with you. Like, your reality is like, laser beam, laser beam, where is my reality? And then your two realities just like, and you're like, oh shit, did I just pee myself? Because it's a lot, connection between two human beings, one plus one, two, crazy. I was at the beach today and I thought I had become pretty confident with talking to girls. And then I was sitting at the beach and this girl's walking by and I look at her and then she looks at me and she says, hey, first, I was like, whoa, that was wild. But what do you do in those situations? Do you, I missed my chance, that's for sure, because I didn't say anything past that. She said, hey, and I went. <laughs> so that's weird, right? And I don't think girls like that. When someone, when you greet someone, you usually just kind of respond normally, right? But um, sometimes it's hard for me to be normal around girls and not in like a creepy way. I feel like I keep that under control. Not reaching in a creepy territory right here. But um, when someone says hi to you, you just kind of say hi back. It's not complicated, but you know what I did? She goes, hey, and I go, <laughs> and then that's that. No further contact. I did a double take as she walked away and I thought, oh, she probably thinks I'm creepy. And then I looked back and she was looking again and I said, oh fuck, she probably thinks I'm really creepy. We've met eyes like three times now. And that is just random awkward eye contact in public. Sometimes someone's eye contact is so strong you don't know what to do with your body like when you make eye contact. Like one time I was on this bus and I was just sitting and I looked up from my lap because that's where you put your eyes, your big eyeballs. And I looked up and just like met eyes with this girl and neither of us looked away and I didn't know what to do with my body. So I started like grabbing at the window beside me. I was like, what the fuck? And then I realized that like, that's what people do when they're trying to like act natural. They're like, their arms, their arms are doing weird stuff and they just kind of, hey. Does that happen for the rest of my life? Probably not. Because as you get older, everyone knows old guys have way too much confidence talking to hot girls. So I'll miss this one day because you see, you see so many old white dudes with way too much confidence talking to like young pretty girls. So at some point it probably gets a lot less scary, but like, is that a sign of aging? If so, haven't gotten there yet because I still worry that it looks like I peed myself when I wash my hands and then I, when I walk past a, a hot girl we make eye contact I'm like fuck she thinks I peed myself but it's just water from washing my hands speaking of which uh, uh, speaking of washing hands I wish that more more men would wash their hands but when I go into public bathrooms all I'm confronted with is disappointment many men Never wash their hands. What the fuck's up with that? Who decided that? I know that when I enter a public men's bathroom, a men's public bathroom, grammatically being correct, I know that when I enter a men's public bathroom, at least 50% of the dudes I see will leave without washing their hands. Cause they're like, so what? I just, I just touched my dick, it's not dirty. Fool. Big fool, your dick's dirty to me and everyone else. But sometimes men be like, oh, well, it's just my dick germs. I'll just get my dick germs on everything. Oops, 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 oops. Dick germs everywhere. That is why COVID. I noticed that like men did start washing their hands more during COVID, but it's still a disappointingly low amount. And I say men, and I also mean me sometimes. I definitely could do better washing my hands because sometimes I'm the so what, I just touched my dick guy. What? 
COVID confessions. We're in a sauna. <laughs> we, are, we are in a fucking sauna in this basement that I live in. And as it becomes more and more sauna-like, the secrets start pouring out. So thank you. We are now going to hear some secrets coming now from the viewers. So um, some of you guys sent in some secrets. I'm just going to start reading them off of my phone. I murdered... Um, can't read that one. Sorry. Sorry. Um, Edward Cullen 404. Okay. Um, next one. Weirdest secret coming from Zane. I'll just act this one out. My deepest, darkest secret is that I don't always smell like Old Spice. And that was the deep, dark secret from Zane. Thank you, Zane, for sending in. And, okay, last one this week. Um, we have one from a new viewer. Hi, Josh. Big fan of the show. Um, congrats on episode 20. Um, my deep dark secret that I have to confess is that your mom and then it just ends so thank you very much for sending it in and um, I'm just gonna have some water and we're gonna start a new clip secret to today the success of life bump volley spike get it in your brains you you even you shithead bump volley spike what do you think of the game going on behind you? Solid. Real players there. They still need to follow the basics. Basics being bump, volley, spike. Bump, volley, spike. It's pretty simple mathematics here, okay? Bump, volley, spike. Oh my god, that was, I didn't know if I had to sneeze or if I had to pee myself or both. Shit, what was I talking about before, before the sneezing? Damn it. Sometimes you just lose your train of thought. Or sometimes you take a little commercial break and eat a plate of toast with jam. I feel like I have discovered the legendary status of jam once again. I feel like I have rediscovered the epic status of jam. On the tier list of things to eat, tofu being like okay, jam being like epic. And then we're just gonna flex into the um, serpent beach body builder. Damn, my body does not move in ways I think it will. How? I'm trying to, just for the audio listeners, I'm trying to strike a pose here with my shoulders down, angled, and my hands pointing one way to the other. Amazing. And then we're just gonna switch over to the other side. Take a deep breath. And COVID sound. <sighs> Release the inner demons through sound. We're going to take a deep breath. And we're going to release the inner demons. <sighs> Do I look jacked? Oh, sorry. That was one of my inner demons escaping me. We're going to take one more deep breath in. And hope that we don't get struck by lightning, right? And three, two, one. Ooh, damn, I hope I don't get struck by lightning. That's the one that kind of falls through my head when I am adventuring places. Sometimes the rain will just fall. The rain will just escape from the sky. And if it happens on a hot enough day, <laughs> That's the sound of thunder, dickhead. You ever heard that before? 
Look it up in a dictionary if you know how to use one. Do people even know how to use dictionaries these days? Let's ask um, our fellow research scientist. Um, he's calling in live from Nevada. His name is um, Carlos from Area 51. Hello. My name is Carlos. I come from Area 51. Um, I rap that all night, all day. So what I'm here to tell you about is do alien frequencies penetrate our brains? So um, step one, um, for you to know about alien waves, you gotta start li listening to the distance of your travel. How far is your voice going? And then understand that for your voice to go that far, it takes a certain amount of force. So for an alien to reach any of the broadcasts that have been flying off Earth for millennia, because I know you've heard of those like articles where you see people send frequencies into space. Like, yeah, they sent a record of Elvis Presley as like compressed sound into space. And you're like, damn, how'd they do that? Yeah, so for that to get all the way to what we assume is alien civilization would actually take millions of years. So that makes you wonder, how did people have false sightings of UFOs? Easily explained. Step one, you find a UFO. Step two, you report it to the authorities. Step three, they let you know that there's, you know, like Area 51 travelers around. They say, what even would a 911 or a 911 operator say if you said that you've seen a, a UFO? How many 911 calls? Are people seeing UFOs? Whoa. Get a whiff of Bora Bora waters. Tell you what, folks. <clears throat> when I eat way too much sugar, it feels like my tongue swells into my back molars. And that, my friends, is not a good feeling. Also, speaking of good feelings, I've been discovering sleeping on my back. Whoa, dude. Life changing. That is like one of the deepest sleeps I have had recently. Pain-free, my breathing felt amazing. I dropped right off into sleep and I woke up only six hours later and I was like, damn, I feel fucking good. Yeah, of course I hit the snooze button a few times. Who doesn't? Jocko Willink, Navy SEAL. And what's up guys? I'm Jocko Willink and I'm gonna teach you guys about about how discipline equals freedom. Maybe he doesn't hit the snooze button. And maybe if I can get to bed and leave myself eight hours of sleep, the snooze button would not need to be hit constantly. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple kung fu sweeps. So audio listeners, now we're kind of going into a yoga instruction once again. You know, tuck that pelvis in. Just like that, nice. Keep that aligned. Take this hand, and all you're gonna do is lay it flat and then sweep across the body, right? All the way down beneath the armpit. Capture all that stink and then throw it at your enemies, right? Open palm, hand into armpit, grab that stink, fling it among your enemies. Right? So now we're gonna try and do that with very square shoulders. I'm gonna try and tuck my pelvis in. Balance is looking good. And now, flat hand, collect the stink, throw it at your enemies. Right on. Now we're gonna change sides. So hand, so you tuck, um, point your penis at enemy number three, right? One, two is to your right, and then three is to the left. You're going to now kung fu arm, right here, making sure not to block your light. And you're going to start open hand towards enemy three, uh, and it just tuck that pelvis in, and you sweep down below the armpit, grab that stink, and fling it among your enemies. And open palm, back into the armpit, tucking that penis in because you have a boner and you're in second grade and your teacher has called you to the chalkboard or the whiteboard or the smartboard and fling that stink among your enemies. 
You can even grab that, rotate your fist outwards, keeping that pelvis tucked, and fling your stink all among your enemies. Amazing. Okay, everyone. I think that's it for the program. I think that we have gone on a pretty wild adventure today. Episode 20 was a treat. I like doing these standing and perhaps I will do more. Who knows? Damn, like that was really fun. I felt very active. Maybe I was thinking better. Audio listeners, geez guys, you've got a task ahead of you. But to the video listeners and perhaps even the audio listeners who kind of see this as flipping through radio channels, kind of cool. I guess that's kind of what this could be like. But um, yeah, this episode felt pretty fun just because I was just kind of doing my own personal show. It was like a, it was my own stand-up show or like my own Tonight Show. And I can just kind of do whatever I want. Some shit's funny, other shit's just like, what the fuck's going on? It's almost like writing verbally on stage. I guess some people do that. They're brave. Love that shit. Okay. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining me on episode 20. I've been doing these one a week for 20 weeks now. Um, thanks to the pandemic, I was like, what the fuck else could I possibly want from life that like, why don't I, no, okay, how do I rephrase this? I thought, what else could I possibly want from life and why don't I have that right now? And I was like, damn, I wish I had a podcast. And then here we are, 20 weeks in, fuck yeah. That's a nice one, uploading every Monday if I can or sometimes Tuesdays because I fuck up. But yeah, so I'm just gonna make sure the audio thing's still recording, that would be embarrassing. But thank you for joining me and um, have a great rest of your day or night or rest of washing your dishes, wherever you're watching this, however you're watching this. Um, Wes is the best. Thank you, Kevin Thompson. Oh, who else, who else comments frequently? Fuck. Can't recall. So, major shout outs to, to Wes and Kevin Thompson. Die Hard Watchers, they watch pretty much every episode, or at least I'm led to believe, because they know about shit that's going on. So, thanks guys, and um, everyone else, make yourself known in the comments, and uh, yeah, until then, peace out, um, stick your fingers up your nose if you want to gross out your friends. Ah, oh, Josh Gross.